something that's always being compared, uh, well, not always, but often when you talk to, you know, fight fans and stuff, is boxing to MMA. Mm -hmm. um, Apples and oranges, I think, really. It's both combat sports, but it's different. Right. Different, like, I, I explain this to the guys I, 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 I teach to is uh, rules dictate styles, you know? So if you have a certain set of rules, like, it's going to, it's going to, change the way you you behave mm -hmm. um so there's certain limitations to boxing that that force a certain style right same thing same thing with mma so it's they're comparatively speaking you know combat sports but they're still different yeah definitely well i mean in terms of what you're allowed to do like you said there are mm -hmm. limitations to boxing yeah um boxers are often confident that even if they fight a ufc fighter they or the MMA fighter, excuse me, not a UFC fighter, MMA fighter in general, whether it be WSOF or otherwise, um, that they can win. Um, James Tony, he stepped into the octagon and learned the hard way that mm. it's not that easy. Um, who do you think is the more complete fighter? Um, well, I mean, it depends on what your def definition of it, what it, what's a complete fighter. Um, somebody who can fight on the street or somebody who can fight within a set of rules. Um, we're, we're not... Uh, we don't have our hands tied so much with so many rules. Like with boxing, you, just for one example, you can't hold and hit. That's a that's a big deal. Right. You know, if you can hold on to a person and hit them, that makes a, a huge difference. Where as opposed yeah. you have to keep moving and jab and be fast, like changes everything. Um, just the uh, the uh, the cardio, the muscle fatigue that sets in when you start pummeling and clinching somebody that doesn't have to let go of you, even if the fight never went to the ground. Like after a few minutes of, of pummeling and clinching. Like your arms are shot. Try right. throwing a fast jab after you've clinched for a couple minutes. It's mm -hmm. one of the things I do when I spar with, uh, you know, really good strikers. Is I'll put them in the fence or put them in the ropes and clinch with them for the first minute or two, and then the rest of the sparring session is completely different. Rather than I like, go out there and try to box them. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to say one person is a more complete fighter than the other because I'm not going to disrespect uh, that sport. They're just two different Understand. sports, you know. Well, if let's say some of the world's best. Boxers of Floyd Mayweather, Manny mm -hmm. Pacquiao, uh, Andre Ward, etc., um, stepped into the octagon. Mm -hmm. MMA rules, you know, elbow strikes, knees, everything, yeah. grappling full on. Do you Change. think they could have success? Uh, they would have to change their style to fit that rule sense. I mean, one thing would just be not even an MMA fight. What if they did a Muay Thai or kickboxing fight? And then uh, you've got somebody throwing leg kicks at them. Right. Just the boxing stance in general, like you're gonna get that front leg eaten up. <laughs> Two or three big leg kicks, and now you're limping and you you can't move. Now you don't have any movement. Like that changes a lot of things. Or if I can if I can hold your head and knee you, yeah. that that changes a lot of stuff too. Like yeah. we're not even talking about going to the ground yet. You're throwing knees and leg kicks. Like you know, if I fought a, a straight boxer, I wouldn't need to wrestle him or throw any punches. I could just kick and knee him. Mm -hmm. What do you think about if the you know roles were reversed? If you guys stepped into the ring with all yeah, the yeah, then that changes it too <laughs> because now they've got that skill. They've got the, they slip. They're faster. Their footwork is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to mess around with that. Mm -hmm. That's a good example. Is uh, my my old coach uh, Tom Erickson? He had a K one fight with Shannon Briggs, boxer versus right, wrestler. Right. Tom goes out there, throws some leg kicks. He does all right. Like. Briggs is like, oh crap, what did I get myself into? Then Dom gets overconfidence, like, all right, starts trying to box him, boom, knocked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. like, it's just, yeah, rules dictate style. So if I, if I stepped into their, their, their world, I'm going to have a harder time. Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, MMA will ever be um, as financially beneficial as boxing is? Um, I hope so. I think a lot of things need to change. The contracts need to change. The UFC has a stranglehold on uh, the market right now, so uh, there's like a glass ceiling. You can't you can't get past that um, that pay threshold because of how they control things. If we had more freedom to negotiate with other other um, promotions or something like that, I think then the the the, the numbers would rise. Mm -hmm. And then especially the focus on. You know, individual fighters, this guy versus this guy, rather than just the brand, I think would also bring more money into it. Right. Well, um, what type of pay is considered good pay these days? Cause I remember one time back, you know, in college and stuff, and mm -hmm. I used to go to Hooters and everything, watch the <laughs> fights all the time. Um, we looked up some of the, 
the fighters' payments, you know, online and stuff. And I saw one guy, this was a pay-per-view event, he got paid like 7000 or something, yeah. something unbelievable for a yeah. pay-per-view. Yeah. Well, I mean, who was it? Uh, David Loaza made like, I don't even know, it was uh, around 20 grand or something like that for a title fight on mm. pay-per-view. You know, that's, that's yeah, not yeah. very good. <laughs> But um, but on the lower level, like you know, my first UFC fight was three thousand to three thousand. That's probably way better than a lower level boxer probably makes. Yeah. You know. So, yeah. um, what's good? I mean, it, it also depends on how active you are. If you're only fighting twice a year as opposed to three or four times a year, mm. it makes a difference. But I think good is being able to train full time, just train and fight to be able to support yourself and your family. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you need to be able to make enough, you know, to do that. And that's sitting sitting at like probably I'd say at least thirty five to fifty five thousand a year, depending mm -hmm. on where you live. Yeah, yeah, at least. Yeah. And that could be three fights a year or whatever. But I mean you kinda need to be in that range, you know, to, sure. to really really get the most out of your training. Do you if feel you gotta work at a bar still or you gotta have a part time job, like yeah. it, it makes it harder. Mm hmm Do you feel like uh more money would make people just have less of a desire to fight because they can kind of cash out on big paychecks? I don't know. I don't. I don't think on some level, some guys. But like, you gotta know, real fighters they want to fight. Yeah. You know, whether they're fighting for a hundred dollars or they're fighting for a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, they want to fight. Like, you know, when I first started, I wasn't making money. It wasn't popular. I started uh, first fight was summer two thousand two. Like, I fought for five hundred dollars. Um, you know, it wasn't on TV, nobody knew about it. I didn't tell my parents that I fought for like three years of my career. Um, you know, people, I couldn't explain to them, what do you do now, what do you do? And like, oh, I, they go into a cage and then I fight, and mm -hmm. like they didn't understand this, but uh, I was still doing it. And right. I think guys who are real fighters, that's, that's, what they, that's what they do, that's what they're gonna do.